So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicole Colston. I'm a STEM education specialist here at OSU and the Oklahoma Water Resources Center. And we're really excited to be on the third segment of this webinar series. So if you joined us earlier, we talked about what is NACEF and we talked about holding a STEM night so that you could get your, your administration, students and families interested in the fair. Um, but today we're gonna talk a little bit about how to pick a research topic. So a very important part first step in the science fair process. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Renee Howell with ACES, our partner in this, uh, and let her get it started. Hi everyone, um, as Nicole stated, my name is Renee Howell. I work for the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, AKA ACES. I'm a PK-12 program officer there, and I'm also the director of NACEF, which is why we're all here. So as Nicole said, this is part three of our webinar series, and we're focusing on how to pick a research topic. Um, I know that for me, when I was an educator, this was probably the most daunting part of starting the entire process was just figuring out how to help my students find out what they were interested in. Um, so our hope is to give you all some resources today for how to start that process. I'll give you guys um, a general overview of how we're going to break down the webinar. We're going to discuss types of science fair projects in just a moment. We'll talk about some resources to generate those project ideas. We'll go over the deadlines and eligibility requirements. Again, um, quick overview of the upcoming webinars that are happening after this. And then like Nicole said, we'll have time at the end for you all to ask any questions. So let's jump into types of science fair projects. So the general breakdown is there's five broad categories for the types of science fairs projects that your students can um, submit. So these ones are called descriptives. They're also known a lot of the time as topic presentations, and they're kind of what they sound like. It's basically your students are doing secondary research. So they are looking at um, research articles from other scientists and gaining information. Um, they aren't actually experimenting when they're doing topic presentations. They're just um, accumulating research so that they can have a better understanding of that topic. Um, I suggest this one either for your younger students who aren't very familiar with science or if you are planning to do like multiple years of science fairs and you know you're going to be in contact with the same students. It's a great opportunity to give them an understanding of the background for a topic they're really interested in and then if they want to continue the following year and do an actual experimentation project. That's a really good um, dynamic to have there. So again, descriptive is for your younger kiddos who are just getting their grip on understanding what science is or for folks that you're going to have multiple years in a row. Collection, um, you can think of this as like accumulating leaves or rocks or insects that's literally collecting um, materials like physical materials that students can compare. Um, this is typically seen for your elementary to middle school kiddos. Um, this is not one that you often see in the high school competitions. Um, demonstration, you can think of this as like a science lab. It's where you have an expectation of the end result the students are just replicating research that's already been done to verify that it's replicable. Um, this is also another one of those that is typically seen in the like middle school range. They're just testing again um, to verify that a process works. Engineering, um, we separate engineering out. Obviously, NACEF stands for Science and Engineering Fair, you know. Um, so engineering is unique in the fact that it involves um, designing and analyzing slash improving a device. Um, this can be like a material device that you physically build, or it can also be technology. So I just want to throw that out there that it doesn't have to physically be something your kids are handling. It can be technological as well. Um, and um, key aspect with engineering is that it involves building a pro prototype or developing a simulation of some kind to test effectiveness. Um, so engineering is really um, primarily what we've seen in the high school realm. Um, and then experimentation. This is the one that everybody thinks of when you think of a science fair project. It is something that um, you expect that they have learned the scientific process and they are developing and carrying out what we call a fair test experiment and then reporting on those findings. Um, so like I said, those first three are typically seen in your younger kids, those um, fifth through eighth grades, and then engineering and experimentation are primarily what you'll see in the high school range. So some resources. Um, so project generators are a fabulous resource if you really are just lost with where to start. 
Um, my favorite one is this first one that's linked here, which is sciencebuddies.org. That is a phenomenal resource. That entire website is really great. If you create a teacher account, they have a ton of resources, everything down to worksheets to help you with going through the process with your students. Um, everything from doing your hypothesis to how to analyze your data. So this is the topic selection wizard tool. And the reason why I like this one so much um, is if you click here on get um, ideas, you can do this for your students, but I would suggest having your students do it in class for themselves. But um, just to show you the process, um, one of the things that I like the best about it is that you can determine how long you have before the science fair. So say you're not able to start until a month before the deadline, you can filter to that. Um, if you have more time, if you're starting right now with your students, you can do more than a month and it'll um, kind of give you different options for what you can do with your students. It also lets you filter by grade level. Um, if you are doing something like, say, you are building your science fair project into a specific standard, um, so you're doing it like a class project type of thing, they can select here, did the teacher assign a specific area for the project? And you can pick from these different options. Um, if you are letting your students take their pick, then you can do, I can pick any area of study. And then um, how would you describe the student's ability to read and comprehend text like the questions on this page? Um, if you're doing with your like, Elementary grade kiddos, you'd probably select just starting, middle school's probably progressing, and then your high school's probably confident. So for the sake of this webinar, I'm gonna select confident and then hit continue. And there are a ton of questions that ask about your student's specific interests. So that's why I enjoy this specific um, project generator because the students get to look at stuff that's actually in their interest field. And you can see these are already selected. I've done this. Um, several times now just to see what happens. So I already have all mine selected. Your students could obviously go through and do this on their own. Okay, so you can see I have 238 results that came up from my very specific interest that I listed. You can still filter based on beginner, intermediate, and advanced if you're going through this and you're like, this feels a little, little too high level for what we want to do right now. You can filter it down. Absolutely, please do that. And then also if you started your project and you had a ton of time and then your student changed their mind and now you only have six days, you can filter that down too. Um, these are also really great because it tells you everything you need. So it gives you things like abstracts. It'll give you, um, let me find a different one, actually, one that actually has like a project guide. Why are you scrolling, Renee? I remember also that ICEF, the International Science Engineering Fair, has a list of of projects and things that students have done in the past, which you know mm -hmm. for, can be really helpful for trying to figure out like the scope of your work or what your competition might look like. Thank you for tossing that out there, Nicole. Um, so it tells you like a breakdown in the summary, the areas of science. It'll also tell you the cost, like how much it'll be out of pocket for you all, um, safety, all of that. Um, which I think is really helpful. And it one of the things I also like is it tells you careers um, that are related to that type of project. So if your student's already interested in this, this is a great opportunity for them to just explore what could be. Um, also, it gives you citations, and that is obviously an important part of the scientific inquiry process is being able to cite your sources. So that's also great. So again, that is the sciencebuddies.org one. I love that one. Um, using your curriculum, as I mentioned before, that is a great resource if you're trying to build it in, if you're not trying to do like an entire subset um, that your students have to do on top of the coursework that you're planning. You are welcome to pick a standard and have your students build their project around that standard. Um, and then another thing that I suggest um, to all educators is just to introduce random cool STEM topics. Um, a couple of great resources for this are Nat Geo Kids um, and um, it's, what is this one called? Science News um, for Students or for Kids. Um, both of those are really great because they pop up little articles that are really easy to understand that talk about um, news in science. Um, and you can filter that to be like weekly. So that was one thing that I did with my students just to introduce them to stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that I think students don't consider to be sciencey um, because it's outside of the realm of that specific science class that they're currently taking. Um, so just exposing them to new content is a great way to generate interest if they have no idea what they want to do their project on. I love that you just pointed out curriculum too, though. I mean, we were talking about the fair seems like kind of a burden or this new thing, but if you're already doing research with your students, the fair just becomes an opportunity to share that research. You know, you're already doing some of the hard work to get there. Right. And um, if you do plan to do that, sciencebuddies.org has um, a really great breakdown of things like um, 
rubrics that you can use to use it as an actual grade in your class. So it doesn't just have to be for the science fair. If you want to use that as something that you're grading the students on as like a project for your class, um, there are resources available and already out there for you to use for that. Um, quick review of eligibility. Um, I did mention el elementary grade level. We only do fifth grade um, in the NASEF competition. So it's fifth through 12th grade. Two divisions, you've got your junior and senior, um, and your students can compete in teams. So this is especially great if you're doing something like using your curriculum um, because you can group your students together. So rather than having literally 50 individual projects, <laughs> you can narrow that down a little bit, especially if you're going to be grading all of those um, as a class project. Um, we do need one team member to be American Indian, Alaska Native, or Native Hawaiian. Students should be ACES members, and this is free to students um, and easy peasy. They will need an adult sponsor, which will probably be you all. And um, key thing here, if you've been on one of these webinars, you've heard me say this already, but students can compete in regional fairs and still qualify for NASEF, but they cannot compete in state fairs and still qualify for NASEF. So that is a very important eligibility requirement. Our timeline, um, the only reason you would have to worry about this January deadline is if your project needs pre-approval. Um, key one with this that folks don't think about often is human studies. If your students are sending surveys out to other people, um, that is considered a human study, so it will require pre-approval. Aside from that, um, things like dealing with unknown microbes would qualify under pre-approval. So you can kind of see that these are things that um, would probably require um, like a university rep or somebody of that nature to help out with the project. Um, other than that, your deadline will be February 24th to submit your registration. The abstract has a separate deadline of March 10th. And then um, as you can see, the fair will be happening itself on April 1st, which we are very stoked about. We are in the midst of planning for the in-person fair and very excited. And all of these deadlines are available on the NASEF website if at any point you forget and want to check them out. Our next webinar is going to be in two weeks on the 26th, and that is going to be talking specifically about science fairs in Oklahoma. So you'll get more opportunity to learn about regional science fairs. Like I said, all students can compete in regional and still qualify for NASEF. And then we'll go over the logistics of actually conducting your research on October 10th. Yes, outstanding. Yeah, we have Julie Engel next time, who's actually the director of OSEF, the Oklahoma State Science and Engineering Fair. So she is super knowledgeable, and is going to help you figure out where to connect uh, regionally so you can get some competition before the big day. Renee, I know I always ask you this, but I think other people are curious about the eligibility too. And just to make it clear, I can go to regionals, and then if I go to regionals, I have to choose OSEF or NASEF. Is that correct? correct? And I also want to specify that if your student goes to regionals and they don't place, that mm -hmm. is fine. They can still complete, compete at NASEF. Um, but oh, if yes. they the get moved that. on, yeah, yes. if they get moved on, um, if they are eligible to compete at OSEF, then mm -hmm. they would have to take their pick between OSEF and NASEF. All right. So I compete regionally and I am not successful. I can still come to NASEF if I if I compete regionally and, I'm, and I qualify, I've got to choose if I want OSEF or NASEF. Correct. You know, I wanted to point out that NASEF is a is a, a smaller fair. We're in a year of rebuilding after a bunch of COVID and that idea that NASEF is a, a more competitive environment or a, um, a more... <laughs> Uh, we'll have less participants and then maybe more opportunities for your students to potentially get that free ride to ISAF. Um, you know, just something to think about as you're building your science fair teams and splitting where they're going. And I think that our fair is building actually um, makes it for a really nice competitive environment for your students with, with positive outcomes. Yeah, I think that's the entire goal of NASEF is to give those students that might not have otherwise had the opportunity to compete at ISAF a little bit of an edge to be able to get out there. Um, in this case, I think they're going to Atlanta, if I recall correctly, this year. Yes, yes. And that's short, a couple weeks after NASEF. All right, if that's all that Renee has to present, um, I encourage you all to put questions in the chat. And I think I'm going to, here in a second, be able to um, open it up for everyone to say hi. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, what's on the screen right now is my contact information. If you have a very specific question, um, please feel free to email me. And if you're not already in our Google Classroom, please feel free to join that. It's got links to all of the stuff that I've shared today, plus a lot more. Um, it's got sample projects from last year. Um, we used Desmond Boykin, who was the 2021 winners project um, that's up on their um, links to all of the um, wonderful project generators and whatnot are also available.